After missing out on Caleb Love for the second time, Missouri does strike oil in the transfer portal with Tamar Bates plus Trey John Jeffcoat. Man, just why? That's my question. So let's talk about that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And you know what? Finally, finally, a player signs with Missouri through the transfer portal. I'm being a little bit sarcastic here because it felt like Missouri fans to me were, well, at least some of them online were being a little bit unnecessarily negative about the whole process. I think Missouri has tons of time here to sign plenty of guys in the portal. And, and as I've emphasized over and over again, plenty of guys to still come in the portal. We have no idea what's going to happen here in the coming weeks, but the big news from last night, Missouri has signed Tamar Bates, a former Kansas City, Kansas area player, a guy that Conzo Martin was certainly after in a big way a few years ago. So this is a, on paper, I would say this is a solid, but maybe slightly unspectacular pickup for Missouri. Because, well, if you look at Tamar Bates' numbers this past season, his sophomore season at Indiana, well, nothing's going to exactly blow you away in terms of his numbers. Now, he is a really solid three-point shooter, made 37% of his threes last season. And indeed, like John Tanjay, like Kurt Lewis, another couple upperclassmen that Missouri's bringing in next season, well, these are wings that can definitely knock down shots. We know that Dennis Gates wants to shoot threes and make them at a high clip. Well, who doesn't want to make their threes, right? But I want to talk about Dennis Gates' comments from a couple days ago later. But I thought they were pretty revealing in many, many ways. But on Tamar Bates, here's the thing with Indiana last season. Mike Woodson, the former New York Knicks coach, well, he did kind of a pro style last season. Sort of a, I don't know, a, maybe a not a pro style, recent pro style, but maybe 10 years ago pro style when he was a New York Knicks coach. And he basically put the ball in two players' hands a lot. And well, among those two guys, it wasn't Tamar Bates. It was Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Hood Shafino. Those guys completely dominated possession of the ball, the amount of shots, and all that good stuff. So Tamar Bates at times was basically the fourth or fifth option, just kind of relegated to standing around and watching those guys do stuff. Now, that's really not a big criticism of Mike Woodson because, well, Indiana had a good season. They were a four seed in the tournament, 28th best offense in the country, at least according to efficiency. So it's hard to really argue with the results, but I do think there's a real good argument to be made that obviously the Bates talent is there. He was like a top 50 guy coming out of high school. So every bit as much talent as Kevin, or excuse me, as Caleb love on paper. But I do just think in, in Dennis Gates, maybe more ball friendly, ball movement friendly type system, I think there's more to unlock from his talent here. I, it's, it sure seems like Gates gets the most out of the players on his roster. Listen, we, we took a, a team that was, we took the best player, Kobe Brown, from a really bad Missouri team last season, added a bunch of Horizon League transfers, and that resulted in 25 wins and a, and a trip to the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament. So it really seems to me that with Gates getting this type of high-level talent, guys from Indiana, guys who were former, you know, top 50, top 100, top 100 type players out of high school, well, I think you're going to see the results be even better in the future. Now, I have had several commenters on YouTube ask me if I have any new information on Jamarian Sharp, the seven foot five 
Western Kentucky players in the transfer portal. A lot of people thought, well, he was a Missouri lean this time last season to join this previous team squad. But I will say there were some comments this week by Dennis Gates that has me questioning how interested Missouri really is in Sharp. I'm just wondering about the information that we're getting right now. I, one thing, Sharp just isn't talking to anybody, so I think there's a lot of assumptions being made here. Well, I'm going to maybe do my own dodgical, my own logical deduction here. What did I say there? Dodgical? What in, what in the heck word was that? Sorry, it's a little early here on Saturday morning, but I did want to give you a podcast. So give me a break here, people. But in all seriousness, Dennis Gates said this past week, and I quote, anyone that we bring in here will be shooting threes. Anyone. I thought was a very interesting word choice. And he says, that's just the style of play that I believe will be successful. And I'm not going to stop. We have to continue to play the style in the regular season. That's going to give us the not only fits our personnel, but gives us the best chance at success. Well, to me, him saying anyone will shoot threes. And then later on, he, he even doubles down on it saying Jordan Butler, a presumed you know, five-man center type player, a big guy, if you will. Well, he says Jordan Butler has size for his position, but he's not going to stop us from shooting three-pointers. I expect him to be prepared to shoot the ball from behind the arc. Well, if that's really true, if that's 100% accurate and there's not really any exceptions to that, then I don't think Dennis Gates is nearly as interested in Jamarian Sharp as people want us to believe. Now, has he... Has he reached out to Jamarian Sharp? Has the Tiger staff been in touch with him? Yeah, I'm sure they have. I think that's quite possible. I mean, my God, I think Missouri's been in contact with at least 50 players so far in the transfer portal, if you look at all the reports happening online. So I'm just wondering if that's really the case, and I have no reason to question it. Dennis Gates goes even further into detail about the type of correct size that he wants. Yes, he wants size and he wants guys to be tall, especially for their position, but he's not going to just bring in some big stiff because he can rebound and protect the paint in theory. I also think that the the Fardaws, a mock kid from Texas Tech, to me, he just never fit the profile, despite the fact that I saw a lot of a lot of reporting out there that oh Missouri is very much after the kid who eventually ended up at Cal Berkeley. So I'm just really interested to see where this ends up going, what type of big men the Tigers actually get in the portal. I do think Caden Shedrick, even though he's he was one for five last year from three-point range, so at least he's shown the willingness to shoot it occasionally. Maybe Dennis Gates will expect him to fire it up there more than that just to have the threat, much like Mo Diara and Aiden Shaw did this past season, despite maybe not having the greatest percentages on paper. I think he just really values that spacing element, and I totally get it. Oh, and by the way, speaking of the transfer portal, well, it opens up again today for football for the next couple weeks. So, yes, the news never stops here anymore. You think there's an off season? Well, not so much anymore. Well, to that point, Missouri just hired a new offensive line coach, Brandon Jones from Houston. And, well, we're hosting, we at least actually reportedly hosted one of his former offensive linemen a couple days ago. So let's talk about that. And Trey John Jeffcoat's really bizarre comments after leaving Mizzou. But you know what? Let's also talk about FanDuel. Guess what? Grand slams, no hitters, double plays, they're all back in a big way. And the pitch clock's here too, baby. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, news customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Just place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back and bonus bets if you don't win. So don't mess your chance once again at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. 
So Houston offensive lineman, I guess I should say former Houston offensive lineman, Cameron Johnson is in the is in the transfer portal and also apparently took an official visit to Mizzou on Thursday per Gabe DeArmond and Power Mizzou. So really, again, since the transfer portal for, for football opened up again just today, well, I think there's a real good chance we could hear a commitment from Johnson this weekend. Just look for look for the old bat signal from Eli, I guess. I think that's a real possibility. Obviously, Brandon Jones, the new offensive line coach, knows him as well as anyone. So, you know, what does my opinion really matter? If, if, if the new offensive line coach really wants this Johnson kid, then, hey, I think you just take him. And at this point in the process, I think you got to be you got to feel really good about that to get a guy that you want on the offensive line. Again, as I've said many times before, the idea of, oh, in theory, hey, let's just go into the transfer portal and get two or three really good starting SEC level offensive linemen sounds amazing in theory. In reality, I'm not sure it's that easy. So I may have been part of the calculation even in hiring Brandon Jones. It may have been that at this point. And again, Considering the timing of when Missouri had to hire this new offensive line coach, I, I don't think that's even a crazy calculation whatsoever. So, bottom line, hopefully Missouri will be strengthening its offensive line here in the next couple days or so. And I got to tell you, speaking of line play, well, let's move to the defensive line. Trey John Jeffcoat, you know, the former All SEC performer in the 2020 season. Boy, the the farther we get away from that season the more bizarre that particular designation looks, right? Jeff Coat gets six sacks in a 10-game season, and, well, that's about how many sacks he's gotten combined for the rest of his career. Jeff Coat will now be spending his sixth season in college at Fayetteville, Arkansas, after previously committing to South Carolina, going back to his hometown, his birth town anyway, of Columbia, South Carolina. Well, for whatever reason, he couldn't get cleared there. So he ends up at Arkansas. And of course, well, I don't know. There's just something with Arkansas right now. They're just people who end up there just have to take shots at Columbia, Missouri, at the university, whatever it is. And I would just like to point out to these guys, you know, you know, folks, I don't know why I did a Jay Leno impression there, but you don't have to be a jerk on the way out. You're allowed to just transfer and, I don't know, show some class occasionally. There's an idea. I don't know. Trey John, presumably he's made some connections in Columbia over the years, some stronger than others. But a lot of people around Columbia love to, to be a part of the Mizzou mafioso and, and help out an old Mizzou athlete, even if they did transfer. I mean, Trey John spent five years here. It's not as though that's an insignificant period of time. But for just no reason whatsoever decides to be like, well, you know, Fayetteville, it's way better than that place, Columbia, Missouri, just basically saying Columbia is terrible or whatever. You know, listen, Jeff Coates still got a long way to go before he catches Daniel Parker Jr. and Trevin Brazil in the, I don't know, former Missouri player douchebag category. So Jeff Coates, you're going to have to give it a little bit more work than that. But at the same time, hey, man, come on. Why? What was the point of that? Just just enjoy your time in Arkansas. Nobody's going to boo you or anything, or at least they wouldn't have before. But to be fair, he's going to actually have to get on the field to be booed. And that wasn't something that Trey John did a whole lot of last season. And you know what? We're going to cut it short right there here for this bonus Saturday edition of Locked on Mizzou. Definitely just wanted to give my take on Tamar Bates at the very least. And, well, yeah, give Trey John Jeffcoat a little a little bit of action as well. But coming up on Locked on Mizzou next week, of course, tons to talk about. Hopefully more transfer portal news on the positive side for Missouri. And I also want to talk about Des Moines Hodges' NBA prospects, which are maybe a little bit better than people think. So I'll see you guys next week right here. Unlocked on Mizzou.